Hello again, everyone who joined now. Connection is great. Perfect. Um, so my name is Elena Schwab and I'm a head designer. Um, I live and work here in London. I'm designing hats for six, seven years now. And um, that's my passion. That's what I love to do. And I love my work. Today, we're going to talk about crinoline fabric, which is now one of my um, favorite materials. And um, I will try to share with you all the techniques that I developed myself or that I figured out during um, um, my work uh, on the bridal collection, which everything started with the bridal collection, uh, to be honest, because previously I didn't really like working with crinoline. I found it quite stubborn. I found it quite old fashioned and really hard to work with. And I put it aside for some time. And now I decided to give it a go. And uh, to be honest, since I <laughs> gave it another chance and I figured out how uh, how I can work with it. So, so the designs look lovely. I fell in love with the material. So um, I'm going to share the techniques that I love the most. Okay, so um, just let me, okay, good connection so far. Okay, so crinoline fabric, um, also called as horsehair or crin. Previously, it was uh, used in ladies fashion in since 1840s um, to support the white, white uh, skirts. In nowadays, uh, and back then it was made of horsehair, so that's why it's called horsehair and linen. It was quite scratchy and uncomfortable to wear, but at the time it was the only technology that was used. In nowadays, crinoline is made of synthetic fiber, polypropylene. If I'm not mistaken, it's very light and it's very strong. And um, uh, the way it's woven, it's a plain weave on a diagonal, which gives this beautiful movement that we all like about the crinoline. Um, so I would say there are three types of crinoline. Plain crinoline, which comes in a variety of different shapes, uh, textures, sorry. Um, Pleated crinoline and uh, tubular, tubular crinoline. Oh, let me show you the example, like this one, for example. Um, I personally don't like it as part of the decoration, but it's very handy. And I'm going to sh uh, share a technique uh, that I'm using to support uh, pillbox hats and fascinators. And also, this one is a tubular crinoline as well. So it comes in a variety of width which is quite handy. And I'm going to show you later what we can do with this crinoline and how helpful it might be. Okay, let's put it aside. So for now, uh, we're going to concentrate on plain crinoline. So let's see, I ordered plenty of different samples to show you. Um, I'm usually working with white and ivory because it's part of my collection, but believe me, it comes in a variety of colors. Red, green, blue, black, you choose. Um, so it also comes in variety of width. For example, this is the widest one, as as long as from what I was managed to find. This is 15 centimeter wide. Um, this one, for example, really beautiful. It also plain crinoline with threads on both sides for decorative purposes. Also. This one, I couldn't find this in white, but also beautiful in red. This is with straw um, yarns, which gives a really beautiful effect. Um, this one with Lurex thread, which is beautiful and shiny. And I want to show you one of the hats. It's still work in progress. Uh, this is uh, the same as the gold, but with silver. So you see how shiny it is, really beautiful, especially in the evening. And 
let's see, this is my absolute favorite one uh, because of its um, texture and also very valuable uh, tip. And I'm going to show you later an example of this hat, um, how you can um, use the decorations uh, using this crinoline. And that's another one here. Also very beautiful, with also with lurex threads, but they are quite thinner than, than in this crinoline. So it gives a light shine. You see how beautiful it is, perfect for bridal collections. Um, oh, and this one as well. This is another with lurex um, thread. Also very beautiful, but it's a bit different in color. It's more shinier, I see. Okay, so um, this is about the the plant uh, crinoline. Pleated crinoline it comes in less varieties and less colors. So it's pleated on diagonal and horizontal and vertically, the different designs. And this one is my favorite. So it comes sort of like on the angle. Very beautiful. And and tubular I already showed you. Oh, I have another two. Wow. This is actually a really a wonderful way of how to um, keep your crinoline fabric just around those tubes. I found those in the charity shops and I love them, them so far. So this is another example of um, crinoline, um, plain crinoline. This comes with three threads. And this one is with the gold lyrics. Okay, so the plant crinoline and pleated crinoline, what um, similarity between these two crinolines is this thread. So I think that most of you who ever try to work with crinoline know about this trick. Um, you can either leave it as it is, or you can take it out and, and leave um, uh, edge nice and neat, or you can pull the thread like this, and it helps to create a beautiful fold. This is quite useful uh, when you want to create decoration with folds. So you can control how, um, what kind of folds you want to make. You want to make them um, a small folds or, or, or wider folds, depending on your design. Um, in this crinoline, for example, the beauty of the fold in the middle, uh, sorry, the, the thread in the middle, you either can take it out or just leave it there, or you can pull it just in the middle. And it will also create a very beautiful effect that you can use for your hats. So that's very beautiful. Another trick that you can use is that when you work with uh, white or ivory crinoline, just because we have threads here, you can um, use dyes to digest the threads because crinoline, it's really hard to dye and you have, I suppose you must have a special dice for that uh, but I never tried so I, I would have no idea what dice to use but if you can use dice for um, for natural fabrics because I think it's linen or cotton I think it's cotton you can dye so you can um, by the end as a result you can have crinoline as the same color as it was but if the threads will dye it in, in, in a different color so you, you can play with the contrast that's a little tip that you can um, also experiment with. Okay, so um, we went through all different types of, uh, of crinoline and now I think it's time to start um, talking about different techniques. So the most important thing to know about crinoline before you start working with it is that, um, well, you know how felts are really really friendly and they're really easy to work with um, whatever you want to do they'll go your way they'll be friendly they'll support you crinoline has a character crinoline has an agenda crinoline has its own mind so you might have an idea 
before you start working with it, but um, not necessarily that's going to happen. Uh, uh, crinoline is very bendy and um, it's quite stiff, so it's easy to create waves with it and amorphic shapes, but the materials, uh, the tools that you must have, needles, pins, needles, uh, ideally long ones, so you can secure the crinoline as you go, because um, it's um, it's sort of like a um, jumpy material, so if you don't secure it, it will not stay. So just have a lot of pins and secure the head as you go. What we're going to need also is the invisible thread, matching thread, sharp long scissors, well, measuring tape, and, and small scissors for the threads. Um, those are basic materials, but these are the most important ones. Also iron and ironing board, or ideally if you have um, ironing cloth, because uh, it will give you a bigger space to work on. Okay, so his, here is um, pleated crinoline. It was made of one piece. I think it was three or four meters. Uh, when I was designing the head, I had no idea what I was doing. So I just decided, okay, I'll give it a go. Whatever the material decides to do, I'll just go with it. At the end, what I created is I folded the material here and I stitch it, stitched it into the base. Um, pleated crinoline is the one of the most easiest um, to attach together without significant notice of, 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 the, of the joint. Um, what you do, you just take the crinoline, pleated crinoline, let's cut a piece. So you see these folds, you just join both ends together carefully, just like that. You can still see the joint of the of two edges, but they look neat, they look really neat. And then you can, um, I would suggest to secure with invisible thread so that you don't see the stitch. Uh, or you can uh, secure with the same color, but you will see the thread. So I would just suggest uh, go with the invisible um, thread. So because of the weave, it's really easy to fold it. Just like that. And it creates a volume. That, that's actually why I love the material. No matter what you do, it always creates volume. So if that's what you want to do for your designs, crinoline is the material that you need. Um, just a little bit hard to work with it because it's it's it, it's like a struggle it's like going to a war <laughs> but when when you learn the techniques and how to handle it it actually could be enjoyable and um, quite fun to work with so yes you can fold it like this and and then you can create a beautiful um, trimming around around the base um, and then I started folding the crinoline all around the hat and and then I would I would twist it and fold it and secure with invisible stitch here and there so you can't see any any stitches. Um, so the key for this technique is just just playing and securing with the pins as you go because otherwise you will you will lose the shape. And uh, and here is the joint, and you just hide it underneath, so it's not visible, and it's also at the back, uh, just next to to the to the um, to the joint. So every time, uh, always, if you want to hide something, hide it at the back. Never hide it at, at the front, because it will be visible. Um, so, in one of the examples, uh, let me find it, this is the hat. So, for example, in a situation, what to do with two 
ants join together because you still have to hide these as well somehow if there are no folds to hide them um, it can be easily divisible so what I can do is just to use another fabric and just wrap it around just like that so that's what I, I that's what I made here so there are two joints what I did, I just wrapped with another piece of crinoline and it looks neat and accurate and you would never know that there's a joint here hidden. So that's a little trick. Another way about the fraying, uh, this is a massive, massive, massive uh, subject. Another technique that we can do is um, that I would not suggest that it's best in the long run, but um, has its own advantages. For example, let's take um, plain crinoline. And uh, also the problem is when you work with the material, um, no matter what you do, even if the cut is accurate, it starts fraying. Right. So what you can do is use a little bit of, uh, well, this is straw stiffener, chemical stiffener, and apply it a little bit on the edge. It will dry, you won't see it, but what it does, it's like a glue, it keeps the material, the, um, the yarns in place. And after it dry, you can use a scissors and the cut is going to be straight and neat and the, and the, and, and the material will not Break, which is which is really amazing so you can use this tip but the only thing you have to remember is that chemical material is a uh, chemical stiffener is highly flammable so please do not use any matches or and, you know because sometimes you, you you can use the um, um, a fire of a candle to to stop it from fraying so please never do it after you use the chemical or uh, nail polish some some people can put uh, uh, put nail polish never do that because it's really dangerous and will easily um, create a fire so please be uh, concerned about um, health and safety but uh, this is a really great tip and uh, it will keep your fabric from fraying uh, but it's not going to help for for the long run so just keep it in mind. So the next um, thing that I wanted to mention about this particular crinoline and other cranes that have a cotton thread inside or have a straw um, uh, woven inside is that you can use sparkles, which is absolutely beautiful. Um, it's really hard to attach sparkles to the crane because it's synthetic and will fall off eventually. Um, using thread, the, um, it's much easier to attach the sparkles. So these ones, they are flat on one side and then you use a special tool, a gun that has different um, heads that you can change. They, they become a variety from small ones to big ones. Um, and then, as you can see here on this hat and also on this hat, I attach sparkles on the thread, not on the crane itself, but on the thread. And that's how they stayed put because um, uh, cotton thread and all natural fiber um, it's easier to attach anything to the natural fiber rather than to synthetic ones. So you might find working with this crinoline really, um, really fun because you can do so much with it. And it's, it's, it can just create really beautiful decorations. So this is about it. Um, also about the sparkles, they, they come in a variety of colors and sizes and, and shapes. Um, 
these are small ones and these are my favorite those are hearts the little cute hearts um okay so this is about the beauty of cotton thread um so you can even create um attach some um sparkles to to this crinoline on the thread and and it will stay put there or or this one so you can put it in the middle or on the edges or you know on all three um yarns um so does the cream melt when you use the hot fix hot fix right that that's uh forget yes it hot fix um sparkles no so um okay let's talk about uh, heat so um the um the hot fix can um does not have a very high um heat it's it's enough for the sparkles to to get attached to to the material but it's not enough to melt the fabric but if you use the iron on high uh heat um okay let me show you this example um sorry i turned oh there it is <laughs> that's what's gonna happen <laughs> um so yeah high heat will melt your <laughs> will melt melt your cream in 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 a few seconds so please be careful with that always use medium heat when you work with crinoline fabric and what i also suggest is to use um a baking paper this one you can find it in the kitchen uh i'm sure most of you have it uh in the kitchen drawer um so the beauty of baking paper, it doesn't uh, stick to, to the surface. It protects both iron and material, doesn't matter what material you're working with, uh, protecting from dirt of the iron being transferring on the material. Uh, for example, working with cinema, cinema has the stiffener, which if you don't use any um, anything in between, it will get stuck to the iron. So just be careful about it. Also, it it helps um, to keep the direct heat away from the fabric. So um, most chances that you will not uh, melt the, the crinoline if you have baking paper and using um, iron on medium heat. So yes, please be careful with that. However, uh, even the failure is, is, is a learning experience. So let's talk about this hat this worked um just let me move this one so this hat is made of plain uh, white crinoline 15 centimeter wide it's also made of one piece i think it was a meter or maybe maybe meter and a half so what i did i started from the back so again, I created the uh, the joints um, at the end of the of the crinoline, and I attached it to the back. And then I started playing with crinoline. Literally, I didn't have any idea what I was doing. I just decided to to go with it. And and you can see I attached uh, one stitch here, one stitch here, another one here, and it already created really beautiful shapes. I didn't even do much. The crinoline did all the work and and this is amazing this is like a teamwork crinoline goes and i'm just securing <laughs> the particular spots that i needed um so it it comes as a continuum of uh, of shape um of folds which creates uh, this air this volume uh lightness which is I find so beautiful and one of the best features of crinoline fabric because not even cinema which is quite light material gives that particular effect and then I just created um, so the last bit of crinoline went creating um, a little bow and then I twisted the end around and I that's how I I hide the um, 
the ends of the of the cranial because you always have to figure out how exact what are you going to do with the ends uh, because you would like to hide them you would like them to be invisible somewhere to create this um, illusion of continuum because otherwise if you see the beginning and the end the illusion of continuum just disappears so you always have to figure out how exactly you're going to hide the end um, so yeah this was a solution for <laughs> how to hide the end here um, as a decoration, you can either leave crinoline as it is, it, it's really beautiful on its own, as if you can see in, in most of my bridal uh, collection hats, I, I didn't add much. So in this case, those are sparkles, sparkles, um, beads, I'm all covered with hats, <laughs> beads and sparkles, um, and, and that's it, or veil. So for this here, I decided to create a silver veil, which uh, I created with metallic foil, um, which looks much nicer than a, a regular metallic uh, netting. Um, it looks smooth, really smooth and uh, shinier. So this particular technique I created with the um, um, metallic metallic foil which that i'm teaching during metallic foil millinery workshop um so those of you who visited um london hat week uh, had a chance to visit my studio and hello to all of you um so it just gives um additional volume as well it's not much it's just a little bit of, of silver netting but it's already creates um, this beauty, richness, that, that's, that's all you need. So sometimes less is more, but you have to figure out what is less, uh, what exactly is going to be decorated as less uh, than adding more and more and more and, and make the hat very heavy and, and then you can't really concentrate what is the, um, the main accent of the hat and what is uh, the secondary and it all becomes as a mess. So you have to, in terms of de um, designing, you always you always um, divide uh, primary uh, decoration effect that it easily visible that all attention once you see the hat goes just inside of it in in on it, and and um, and secondary that supports the primary effect. So always consider that. Um...